this painting by Claude Monet of the Palais du Carl in Venice, represents not only the peak of Claude Monet's achievement as an artist, but it also represents the story of the Goldschmidt's quest to recover their lost legacy to theft in Nazi Germany. The Goldschmidt sale on October the 15th, 1958, was really one of the most important auction sales of the 20th century. For the Goldschmidt sale, the Peter Wilson of Sotheby's decided to pull out all the stops. It was the first sale where a full color catalogue was produced. Celebrities were invited, 1,200 people attended the auction. At 220,000, nobody offered any more. <laughs> the Goldschmidt sale broke the world auction record for modern painting. Jakob Goldschmidt was one of the most important bankers of the early 20th century in Germany. Goldschmidt, as a Jew, was persecuted very early on by the Nazi authorities. And in the spring of 1933, Jakob Goldschmidt and his young son, Owen, fled from Berlin under cover of darkness, putting all that they could grab into the trunk of their car, leaving the bulk of his art collection in his mansion. His art collection became a target for confiscation. It was dispersed in two auction sales, the for sale of Jakob Goldschmidt's art collection at Hans W. Langer in September 1941 included some amazing works of art. The Doge's Palace by Claude Monet, an amazing Monet of poppies and lucerne, an important Cezanne of a seated man, and no fewer than seven works by Renoir. This is the original catalogue for the forced sale of Jakob Goldschmidt's art collection. You can see both Monets, and against each is marked the name of the buyer and the price which they fetched. The Monet in particular was a painting which had been very important to him and he knew that it had been bought as a present for the chairman of the United Steelworks in Germany. Albert Vogler had the painting in his collection from 1941 up until the time when he was arrested and committed suicide to avoid being tried at Nuremberg. The painting was inherited by his wife and then passed down to his daughter and Jakob Goldschmidt had to commence proceedings against his daughter to try and recover the painting. Unfortunately, he died in 1955, but his son, Erwin, continued the fight right up until 1960, when he met with the Vogler family and it persuaded them to give the painting back. Anthony Goldschmidt was the grandson of Jakob Goldschmidt. Anthony was one of the most well-respected and famous graphic designers in Hollywood history. He does remember this crate arriving at his house in New York and being so awestruck that out of the crate came this glorious Monet. Monet came to Venice in the fall of 1908. At first he was reluctant to leave Giverny. He had been wildly successful at painting the water lilies in his garden and the lush surroundings. And so when he received this invitation to go to Venice, he didn't know what to expect. He arrived in Venice and he remarked that this was such a grand spectacle, he didn't know if he was equipped to actually capture it. He had never seen architecture like this before. The Palazzo Ducale, the Ponte della Prigione, and the prison, which is what we're seeing here. And we're seeing it under very particular atmospheric conditions. He has purples, and he has pinks, and greens, and blues. It's really the full spectrum that captures all of the crystalline reflections that are happening as the sun is shining through the mist and reflecting off the beautiful limestone and marble of these buildings. He's not on stable ground, both figuratively and literally. He's painting something completely new. One of the things the Nazis were doing in trying to confiscate Jewish-owned art collections and indeed state art collections was to revise art history and to rub over the traces of Jewish patronage. They were able to actually reverse that process and bring back to public view the amazing contributions which families like the Goldschmidts had to patronage and to art history in the 20th century. 